so we have seen role and what do you know what what a role contains so it contains something called verbs and verbs or actions and then resources on which the verbs and actions should be applied and then we use role binding to allocate this role to a particular user we have already seen that but there is a shortcoming and that is that a role is always scoped to a namespace if you do not mention any namespace while creating the role it will be defaulted to the default namespace that means that you cannot create a role at all to provide cluster wide permissions or across multiple namespaces so what if you need to do some cluster wide actions on our resources which are available throughout the cluster so that's where cluster role comes into picture it also it has verbs and actions and resources so basically the verbs would be applied on the resources we create something called cluster role but cluster role is scoped or limited to the entire cluster so that is the difference between cluster role and role so role is always limited to a namespace but cluster role is not cluster role works throughout the cluster and across all the namespaces now we have cluster role so that means you should have something called cluster role binding also which binds the cluster role to a particular user it is exactly similar to role binding but the difference is that cluster role binding associates a cluster role to a particular user now why do we need that because we have something called non namespaced resources so far we have discussed a lot of resources or objects in kubernetes like pods de deployments replica sets replication controllers services etc all those are created in a particular namespace be it a default namespace or a non default namespace but there are resources in kubernetes which are not bound to a particular namespace for example nodes we do not have nodes or we cannot have nodes for a particular namespace only so is persistent volumes so we have seen in the previous section that we use persistent volumes for storage and persistent volumes are also not limited to a namespace secrets which you have not seen yet that is also not namespace namespaces by themselves are not namespaced so all these are non namespace resources and if you have to provide permission on these resources provide rbac authorization for these resources we'll have to use cluster role and cluster role binding we can scope cluster role to namespaces also using role binding that means we can create cluster roles to define the role of the cluster and then instead of using cluster role binding you can use just role binding to associate that cluster role in a particular namespace then you have something called cluster role aggregation we can have multiple cluster role put together in a single space or in or in a single block that is called cluster role aggregation we will not discuss this but just i wanted to give you an idea that there is something called cluster role aggregation which can be used to put multiple cluster roles together in the same same place let's see the demo of cluster role the first thing that will do is we have been doing this r back but for this there is a setup or configuration that has to be done at cluster level when we create the kubernetes cluster do we have this setup or not let us go ahead and see as i said it is it has to be set up or configured while creating the cluster and we created the cluster long long back using cube adm so let's go ahead and see whether we have this configuration set up or not so this is my master node i'll go ahead and see the pod of cube api server and this is the pod let us go ahead and describe it we have already seen this and the command that is being run is cube api server along with some arguments so one of the arguments is this authorization mode and it says the authorization mode is node and rbac so that means that our cluster is set up with rbac authorization mode there's something called node which is needed by kubelets to communicate with various kubernetes components i'll not go into the details of node authorization mode at all 
the one that we are bothered about is RBAC, which is already set up. And almost 100% of the times you'll have RBAC authorization mode set up in your enterprise clusters. So we have RBAC set up at cluster level. The next thing that we want to do is give KTS user access to list nodes. First, let us see whether the user can actually list nodes or not. I'll go to the client machine and run kubectl command from there. All right, so I'm in this client machine. So let us go ahead and try to execute get nodes command. It should not be modes, it should be nodes. Okay, it says that nodes is forbidden. The user, KTS user cannot, cannot list resource nodes in API group. This at the cluster scope. So you know what why what this error is and why it is coming because the user is not authorized to perform the list nodes or get nodes operation. So what I have to do is I'll have to create a cluster role and a cluster role binding to associate that role and its permissions to this KTS user. So this is the manifest file. I have put both of them in the same file and this is the first time I'm doing it. Just to let you know that you can do this you can have multiple manifest files put them together in a single file and then execute that so the top portion is the cluster role file so the api version is of course rbac authorization.kts.io kind is cluster role in metadata we mention the name of the role and in rules we mention api groups uh, for nodes it is blank resources is nodes and verbs is list and get and the bottom portion is cluster role binding. So what this will do, it will go ahead and associate KTS user with the cluster role named KTS user cluster role. The kind is cluster role binding. And in subjects, we have kind, which is user. And the name of the user is KTS user. And then we have API groups. And in role reference, we are referencing the cluster role that is created in the top portion of this file let us go ahead and create this and will not create this for any namespace so this again i'm getting this yaml to json error and by this you know that there's some problem in the yaml syntax let us go ahead and try to fix that it says that line 5 did not find comma or square bracket so this is the problem it should be square bracket hopefully it will run this time Okay, there's some one more. There's one more error. Line 12 mapping values are not allowed in this context. Okay, it seems like that we cannot put cluster role and cluster role binding in the same files. Sorry, I have chosen a wrong topic to show you how to put multiple manifests in a single YAML file, but you can do that for other resources. So let me go ahead and create the cluster role and cluster role binding both, and both have been created. Now, let me go to the client machine and try to run the list nodes command again. Well, I'm in the client machine. So this is the previous error. Let me try now. And as expected, we are getting the nodes here. We have two nodes, one master and one worker. So get nodes command is working. And we, there's no namespace that is needed. You can mention namespace and then get the same thing. So it is not at namespace level. So before proceeding further, let me show you a, cl a few cluster roles that are already there in the system. So kubectl get cluster role would give you all the cluster roles that are available. And if you see here, there are so many cluster roles available. The first one is admin, which was actually given to KTS user admin. Same is the case with cluster admin. And this is the one that we have created. And there are some system level which you don't have to bother too much about then there's this weave net and view so let's see the cluster role bindings that are available and these are the cluster role binding let's see the cluster admin cluster role binding what does it have okay it says that the name of the cluster role binding is cluster admin and the role is cluster role and the name of the role is also cluster admin so let's try to describe the role itself. And this is how you can find out. So I'll do the same for the roles that we have created also, but how do you read this? 
The name of the role is of course cluster admin and there's some labels and annotations and the policy rules says that on all resources that is meant by star dot star and all verbs as it is wildcarded by star are allowed. Now let's see our role. Now uh, this is what it says. This is our role. The name of the role is KTS cluster role. There's no labels on our annotations that we have provided but it says the rules that are mentioned in the role so the resources is nodes and the verbs are get and list so this role has permission on nodes resources and the actions that can be performed are get and list so this is how you make sense out of this describe cluster role command there are a few things non-resource urls and resource names we have not mentioned any resource names as such so that's why it is blank don't worry about it if if needed you can mention resource names also so the in the next part let us provide cluster admin permission to kts user and this is the role what we are saying here same everything is same api groups resources nodes verbs is star and then cluster role binding everything is exactly the same the only difference is in the verbs wherein we have mentioned star so we can use this to provide cluster admin access to the K to KTS user that we have created. I'll modify the same file and just mention star here and apply the file again. It has been updated and if I go ahead and describe the cluster role, it says that it has all access. That's why the verbs, there's a wildcard star in verbs and in the resources we have nodes. And now this KTS user can go, go ahead and do everything that Kubernetes admin that we have been doing so far. So of course it can list the nodes and it can do a lot of other stuff which I don't want to do. I don't want to disturb the cluster that we have created. So that's what cluster role and cluster role binding is. But one thing, one thing is that you have seen a lot of verbs, uh, resources and API groups. And you might be thinking where to, where to get all these things from. But I have tried to put all the verbs, resources and its corresponding API groups in this. And I think this should be enough for you uh, to work on. But if you need more information, you can go to this URL that I have mentioned in the resources also. So these are the list of verbs that are available and these are the list of resources. And in brackets, we have the API groups. For example, for pods, services, uh, nodes the API groups is blank but for deployments it's apps we have seen that same is the case with replica sets stateful sets for ingress rules which we have not discussed yet it is networking.kts.io for network policies which we will discuss next the API group is also networking.kts.io so for daemon sets it is apps for roles it is rbag.authorization.kts.io same is the case with role bindings for service accounts also it is blank so that's all about roles role bindings cluster roles and cluster role bindings in the next video we'll go back to authentication again and we'll discuss service accounts which you have not done so far